Hi guys, this is Form I-485. This is based on my experience. I'm not a lawyer or whatsoever. First, this don't touch this place and this one don't touch this because this is to be completed by an attorney or accredited representation a representative. So if you are using an attorney, so the attorney will sign this place here. So you start from here and um, uh, alien number. So if you have alien number, you have to put that here, the alien number. And then continued here. So your current legal name. So just read it guys and then okay this other names you have used since birth. So if you are using other name except except your name. So if you're using different name you have to put that here and then continued here. But if you are not using another name just put in a and then your date date of birth and then here your six so and then city of town. So next so this is information about you so country of birth country of citizenship national of philippines and then another early number and then in care of the name so you have to put your address here and then the name and then continue here so you have to read all these things here and then early number here and then provide your u.s city uh, social security number so here it's saying here has the social security administ administration efficiency issue the social security unto you i answered i answered yes here so if you answered yes because i have already a social security number if you answered yes here you have to write it down the number the social security number here so and then if it's asking here do you want the ACS? because if you answer no here it's asking here here the, like for example if you answer no here and then here it's in a because you don't have ACS number yet so you come here and then you put yes because this if you put yes here which means do you want the is is a to issue your social security so that's the good deal to you because they are going to issue the is number to you while they are processing your green card so put yes on it if you don't have but if you if you have already just put no so and then continued here because i have already so i put i put no most of the time here and then here continue passport number use at last arrival so you can see that in your passport that your last arrival and then travel document number you use at last arrival so here expiration date of this passport so you have to write it down the expiration of your, of your passport and the visa number so you put here and then your address where, where you are living right now and then date of arrival So next here, so again, early number, so expiration date at the rise, uh, this is the expiration date of your form I-94, and then here, and so I put key one here because I am the key one, it's not in here, provide your name exactly as appears on your form I-94. So there is a lot of question about this, why there, there are form 94, there is no middle name, so they take out your middle name in form I-94. So that's why it's asking here, provide your name exactly as it appears on your form I-94. So even all your application, you put your middle name and then they just put your last name and first name here. So just copy what is writing in your form I-94. So next, it's here, continue here. You have to read it here. So it's asking here. Uh, you have to read it, all of this. And then my answer is key one. And key two because I am the key one, so it's up to you. I don't know what you are applying, Redo or Redos or U.S. citizenship form. I so I don't know, but for me it's key one visa. So em employment based. So this I don't answer this here. And the next, that's all my answer, guys. Just please read receipt number of underlying petition. So this is the receipt number. This is. Did you remember that your number while you're applying a Q1 visa, you receive this, uh, I think you can see this in, in, OE, in OE2, that there is writing their WEC and then there's a number. You know, that's the number, you have to write it down here. And then this, the date is priority date, you can find this in, in OE1. And then next, again, it's LA number, and then straight, let's put address here, because they are going to send a lot of emails to that address.
anyway it's up to you if you want to use different kind of address but it's better you have one address you don't have to change many times okay just write it all here and then this is my address in the philippines so this is country where i am right now and then here so this is a residence so that's next just read all of that about additional information so i don't write it here because i don't have any additional information and then here again it's information about your parents so information about your parents so i put my mother's name here i put my mother's name and birthday and then where uh her date of birth and then next so here uh the address of my mom and then information about your parent too so i put the father's name here and then his address uh, date of birth and then here information about your mar marital history what is your current marital status so i'm married so and then here so just read it guys and then here it's a current spouse legal name and this is my husband's name here it's my husband's name and then his birthday and then his address the next so here, information about your marital status, okay, I put any here because I don't have any. And then here, information about your children. So information about my children, I have two, so I put two here. And then I write down my eldest, eldest son, and then alien number of my son, and then birthday, and then I put my younger son, so alien number and birthday. So if you don't have Kito, just put in E on this side, just put in A next it's here information this one so I'll just read it all about here it's so it's asking here biographic information so it means it is like only own box so i'm putting not hispanic or latino and then here is race all of the applicable boxes so i put asian and then here my height so and five one and then white it's uh, 100 pounds and then here eye color brown hair color black so until here usually what is have you ever been a member so i put no here so that's the next so part part eight so this is what is my answer here so have you ever been denied admission so no have you ever been so just read it here guys but most of the answer here it's no but it's up to you maybe i don't know uh maybe there's something that you put yes just make it sure to read everything what is writing here and next and here also just write it everything here then here so most of my answer it's no and then here so reminders guys this is I get RFA on this because oh, when I'm doing my I-485 most of their answer they put they put no but you see I send me an RFA that my answer is supposed to be yes so this is my correction this is my correction answer so I get RFA so it's supposed to be that you have to read it are you subject to the public charge ground of admiss admissibility under NA, uh, INA section 212 something like that so this is my correction answer here so most of the tutorial i saw before they are putting no so that's why i get rfa because they're putting no i am okay to be honest i don't really exactly understand what is uh, saying here so that's why there is most of the tutorial in the youtube I, i've been watching they said no so this is your bonus guys if you're watching my video so don't uh, make mistake in this place so I, now I correction I put this and then what it's writing in my RFA uh, I have to put initial and date uh, beside my answer so that's why I put my initial here and the date so until here so I have to answer because if you said no here you don't have to answer this from 61 to 68 but because uh, it's saying that I have I supposed to answer yes so that's why I have to answer from 61 to 68 so I'm answering here I put yes and then here what is the size of your household so how many you are in the house so like for example um you and your husband or if you have kids like for example three of you so just put three don't count your 
nephew that like it's in your neighbor don't count don't count your neighbor just how many living in the house so if you are like just two of you just put two and then here indicate your an annual household income so i put here with initial but you don't have to put initial guys if you are answering this this one i put initial and address each number because i get uh rf in the side from this six, from 61 to 68 so all you have to do is just put yes and then how many how many people in your household and then this one this one don't put initial and address uh, sorry initial and date so next so this is until 68 so here i put here so i put here this is my answer here so i put also, also initial and date and then here i put also initial and date and in here list of certification license skills detailing true work experience and educational certificate so i put here high school trial and then this is my experience my work before so i put like that but you ha you put like that you have to type that in your computer me i'm writing in my pen because i make it that with initial because this is my rfa so you can do that in your computer when you are doing your form i-94 and then this is my uh in, so initial and the date and then here i put have you ever received supplement so i said a supplemental so i said no because we never we don't receive anything so i put initial and date and then have you ever received long term so i said no because I, we don't receive anything and then here no no so this is until here my rfa so when you are going for answer here you don't have to put initial and date this is only me i put initial and date because i get rfa with this so I already sent my form I-94, so this I'm doing again because uh, for my RFA. Next, continue. So here, uh, page 15. So just write, uh, read everything here. So most of the answer is, no, just read everything, guys. So you will not get RFA like me <laughs> because it's so stressful when you get RFA. But in any way, most of the applicant of adjustment of status, they get RFA, different problem. So here, that's my answer. And then next, like that. This is applicant signature, so my signature and the date. And the next, this one's all here, it's a blank because it's just read it all here. And then next, it's the last page 20. So that's it guys, that's a completed form I-485. So hopefully guys, I give you some more information and please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel thank you guys god bless you all